She said something, uh, and I want to, I never, y'all know me, I never do this, but I felt this mandate in my heart today uh, to encourage uh, the folks who view online, whether uh, they view, are presently viewing or will view at a later date to uh, do your due diligence to share this uh, this gospel we're preaching here at the church. Uh, I so bore witness with uh, the statement that Mama Lou made there at the end that uh, I see this house filled. And the house is not limited to these four walls, no. but we have a, an electronic church, like Papa Bob likes to say, uh, that uh, we're feeding into and that uh, folks are receiving. With that being said, uh, let me not tarry any longer. I want to share what God has put in my heart to share this evening. She made a statement uh, and hit on a portion of scripture. And I think it was uh, essential to what I needed to add to what I have uh, noted. And I normally don't preach by notes, but I feel like that uh, God was speaking to me something of the utmost importance uh, to convey this evening. And uh, so I felt like something was missing in regards to that, but with Mama Lou mentioning the scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 where it talks about the Spirit knoweth all things. Uh, the Spirit uh, that we're talking about is the Spirit of God, and He's given us His Holy Spirit and you know the Holy Spirit what we don't realize that the Holy Spirit has a mandate yeah. uh, it's the it's to unveil or reveal the mysteries of God the word mysterion is actually a military word that comes with an oath uh -huh. and the oath is that the Holy Spirit has an oath to God yeah. to unveil mm -hmm. the mysteries by order and command of yes. God himself yes. inside of you. Yes. I just got Holy Ghost goosebumps yes. all over me. Hallelujah. I don't know if you picked up what I said, but yes. what I'm telling you is that the Holy Spirit has a mandate yeah. on his presence yes, to does. unveil inside of you, yes. hallelujah, the mysteries of God. That are locked up inside of each and every man, woman, boy, and child. Yes. To lead you and guide you into, into all, all truth. We need to give Dana a microphone no, so she can help me preach tonight. <laughs> to lead and guide you into all truth. That is a mandate that comes with the nature. How many knows the Holy Spirit has a nature to it also? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I begin to listen to, I, you know, I'm sometimes reluctant to say certain names because you get pigeonholed when you mention certain names. But uh, uh, this one gentleman was talking about uh, singing praises unto the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. And people get uncomfortable with that because the Holy Spirit is simply a nature that's right out of God. And the scripture says in the book of John, it says, and, and these three are one. Yeah. So to worship the Holy Spirit is to worship God himself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And to engage him is to unlock that which is uh, locked up inside of each and every one of yeah. you. Yeah. He has yeah. given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, some of us have the gift of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That is cloven tongues of fire. He can be like fire shut up in my bones, or he can be quiet and still as the night, just like we experienced here this evening. And I don't know about you, but I felt such a love and a peace in that silence. Did you feel it today? And uh, at times, I would get uncomfortable, and I would be so conscious of what other people who may not understand are viewing but I'm finding myself so disconnected with these things yes. in the natural that so easily beset us yes. that is to get our attention off of what God is doing. Yes. Because I was listening at Bob today and he began to talk about flesh and blood can it not inherit the kingdom. 
But here's the truth. I know three, hallelujah, flesh men. Now it happened different ways. Hallelujah, who inherited the kingdom. But it wasn't done by flesh. It was done by the Spirit. Yes. The, the, the Spirit, hallelujah, the flesh had to succumb to the Spirit yes. and relinquish and lay down everything, yeah. hallelujah, that it thought it was that uh, the Holy Spirit or God himself took up residence inside of Elijah yeah. who was carried away in a whirlwind, right? who also, Enoch, who walked so with God yes. until he was no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. For God took him. Yeah. Hallelujah. He didn't die. Tell your neighbor, he didn't die. Yeah. He just was not anymore. Right. Hallelujah. Because he was so disconnected with his flesh body. Hallelujah. Oh. He totally engaged God by yes. the Spirit. Hallelujah. That that body was so consumed with the light of who he is. Yes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. That everything. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go ahead. I want to try to, I want to try to make this, uh, make sense somehow, some way by the unction of the Holy Spirit that the mysteries of God are unveiled before us to this evening. Yes. yes. I was thinking, let me back up a little bit. And I'm going to get right back to the point I wanted to make there. So y'all help me remember this as I try to track through this. When I went on vacation, a part of me made up my mind that I was going on vacation from everything. <laughs> from everything. Yes. From ministry. Yeah. From, from being a peacemaker. From being responsible for atmospheres yeah. and relationships. But let me tell you something. What I found out when I went on vacation, you can't go on vacation from who you are. Right. And right. if we're having to operate in a way that we have to make an effort to be what ministry has formed us to yes. be, yes. then we haven't entered into what we're called to be. That's right. Because I don't have to try to be a peacemaker. I am. That's right. I don't have to be one who cultivates an atmosphere. Hallelujah. Because I am. Yes. When I walk into a room, when all hell is breaking loose, somehow, some way, peace finds a way yes. to make its presence known there, Diane. Yes. Love finds a way to make yes. itself known there. Yes. What I'm telling you is we're the very essence of who he is. Yes. We don't have to try. We don't have to work it up. We don't have to sing a song to be worshipped right. because worship is who I am. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to try to do the things that you might do because it is not who I am. Amen. And it's not my place to judge the things that you do because the very presence of who I am brings into your presence, hallelujah, a nature that will cause you to arise to the place that he's called you to be. It's not my responsibility to put requirements on you. Oh yeah, are y'all with me? Yeah. So when I went on, went on vacation, Tony, I didn't go on vacation from who I am, because who I am followed me right where I was on vacation. Right. Right. Hallelujah! While I was on vacation, Tony, Hallelujah! The the God inside of me had a divine appointment and encounter with a young lady. Or, well, she wasn't young, but. I feel like she was young in her spirit, right. young in the Lord. And she needed an encounter that we had. Her name was Polly. Her husband has passed away. I don't know how long, but it seemed pretty recent from the way that she was uh, so emotional. And I just began to let her talk and not rush her because I'm on vacation. Amen. And I have the time to listen. I don't have to make time to listen. Yeah. Hallelujah. God gave me the time to listen. Amen. And she began to share with me and weep with me. I didn't ask her that. She just did it. Because there was something, 
hallelujah, that was inside of me that made her comfortable to share her life story with me. Yeah. She even told me about her dog Milo. And when people, Tony, are important to you, you don't forget their names and you don't forget uh, what is important to them because they're important to you. Even her dog, her husband, died of a massive heart attack. They were playing the game Skip Bone. And he was in perfect health. And she began to tell me, Hallelujah, don't take for granted the people that God's put in your life. Love them while you can. Because I didn't know he, that he was going to die that day. Hallelujah, he just said, we we're going to finish this game of Skip Bone. And, and she made a... And one of them made the joke that the other one was going to let the other one win. And they had a good laugh about that. And moments later, he died of a massive heart attack in the bathroom. And then the only connection she had to him in the natural, other than their personal belongings, as far as something that she could give her love to, was her dog named Milo. And that was his dog. And he had loved on that dog had a relationship with that beautiful animal and it was the only thing that she could connect her love to him mm -hmm. and she loved that dog and noticed he wasn't acting right and come to find out that dog had been diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and only been given a limited amount of time and I'm sharing this for a reason mm -hmm. and then she started telling me that she, she didn't know who I was from Adam's house cat whatever that means mm -hmm. and uh she said, so I talked to my pastor, and I asked him, and she said, I don't know what you think, but I asked him if it was okay to pray for my dog. And I just looked at her and said, of course it is. And she said, that's what he said, too. And uh, she said that that dog was supposed to be dead nine months ago, but God's given her nine more months with that dog. And, uh, of course, he's... Of course, they deemed him with other, they removed one large portion of cancer. But she hasn't taken one minute for granted with Milo. Amen. Because she just wasn't ready to lose him too after losing Milo. What we're dealing with tonight is, uh, what I want to get to is our issue with death itself. And death looks at every one of us in the mirror. And when we begin to see death from heaven's perspective, Hallelujah. Death quickly loses its hold and its influence over your life. Hallelujah. Because we're not a people of death. Hallelujah. We're called to live and not die. Hallelujah. And, we're, and, and for us to get so uh, caught up with this uh, flesh life, Jesus himself, and they didn't understand what he was saying. Me and Dana was having this conversation uh, just this past week. Jesus himself said, Destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it back up. Because he knew something that they didn't know, and they didn't understand. And I think there was even a part of Jesus, and I think I can prove it, because he himself said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because see what happens is as we begin to take this walk with Father, yes. Hallelujah! And I need this. I need to take a moment here. I don't want to rush through this. Uh, that when we go through these things and we live this life the way God wants us to live it by the Spirit through the Spirit, it begins to mortify Diane the deeds of the body. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah! Because we'll live and not die, yeah. and we're going to live by the Spirit. Believe it and receive it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, our covenant with death has been disannulled. Right. We sing this song, but we still battle with the issue of death, Tony. Yes, all of us, even I, even though I'm talking about it, how we all deal with this issue. Hallelujah. But when we begin to get our focus on the spirit and the essence yes. of who God is right. in a people. Yes. Hallelujah. Death quickly begins to lose its hold.
old and it's right. crippled us. Right. Death's association with aging, hallelujah, becomes disconnected to the aging process. Right. I believe that with all that's within yes. me. Because that spirit that's within you, it, has, it doesn't know the definition of death. Right. All it knows is life. Yes. It came from life. Yes. And that to live and never die. Right. Yeah. My God. Death hangs on the same tree with good and knowledge. That's right. Y'all heard me say one time, some people call it the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I've learned, Diane, to think of it as the tree of death. There's two trees yeah. you can eat from, the tree of death. And there's both knowledge of good and evil in that tree. Right. Hallelujah. But in the tree of life, there's only the knowledge of life. Right. Hallelujah. There's only the knowledge and the essence of who he is. Right. And who is he? He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is strength. Yes. He is my Holy Ghost. He is my Redeemer. Hallelujah. He's redeemed me from the very beginning when I was birthed out of Him. Yes. Hallelujah. I came from God through my parents. Hallelujah. But just because I came through my parents, I don't have to be tainted. Hallelujah. With the deeds of the body. Right. Hallelujah. It was purposed yes. for man. Once to die. That's right. And my association with death was eradicated when Jesus said, It is finished. Yes. So was man appointed to die once? Yes, he was. Where was my death taking place at? On the cross, Diane, when he died my death. Yes. Hallelujah. That I might have his life. Yes. And there was evidence of that life through Elijah yes. and through Enoch. Hallelujah. And then confirmed by Jesus himself. Yes. Because the one thing that Enoch and Elijah did not do, their body didn't have to lay down in the grave. Woo! But Jesus did. Yes. Hallelujah. But even the power that laid inside of Jesus, inside of that tomb, Woo! who caused him to get up on the third yes. day. And that same power is inside of you and me, yes. Sheila, yes. to live yeah. and not die. Yes. To mortify the gates of the body. Hallelujah. To er eradicate our debt with flesh. Oh, yes. I'm sorry I'm yelling. Oh, I don't mean to be. All right. But I'm passionate and I'm hungry for you to know him in a more excellent way. Yes. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. In the mirror translation, Tony, it says it this way. We owe flesh nothing. Uh -huh. We're not debtors to the flesh. No, we're not. In the verse 13, in the light of all this, to now continue under the sinful influence of the senses. Yeah. Of the senses. Yeah. Is to reinstate the dominion of spiritual death. Instead, we are indebted to now exhibit the highest expression of life inspired by the Spirit. Yes, hallelujah. So if you live by the flesh, you die by the flesh. Right. If you live in a carnal realm, you die a death in the carnal realm. Right. Hallelujah. And the carnal mind will have its way with the flesh. Yeah. Right. Come on. But even more so, the spirit will also, and then some, have its way with this flesh. Right. My God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where carnality perpetuates death, Hallelujah. Spirituality eradicates death in the yes. body, yes. therefore mortifying the deeds of the body. That's right. In other words, nothing you can say, the biggest sin you could possibly do, can't separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. Because we don't identify with that sin nature any longer. We're identifying with the nature. Yes. Hallelujah. That was introduced to us. When these minds begin to be quickened, yes. hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit yes. and the revelation of who he is. Woo. That hallelujah. is my salvation and all that my salvation hinges on 
is who he is, Sheila. That's right. I'm not worried about hell. I'm not worried about death. I'm not worried about the consequences thereof because I have engaged him. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the likeness of who he is, I'm reconnected. That's right. Hallelujah. And I'm aware of my co inclusion yeah. with Christ. Hallelujah. This is the mystery that has been hidden. Yes. Hallelujah. That religion don't want to understand. Amen. Because it has to be a list of rules on rocks. That's right. And you got to do it this way. It's my way or the highway. Hallelujah. And they'll tell you hell's hotter than it's ever been. Because it's fuller than it's ever been. But I got news for you. He emptied it out yeah. once and for all, yeah. never to be filled again. Yes. Hallelujah. The hell that we're experiencing is only limited to what we're experiencing in this flesh body. That's right. Oh, Lord. We're messing with some sacred cows now. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you think that only the only hell that you've got to worry about is on the other side because you didn't give your heart to the Lord, you're sadly mistaken, brothers right. and sisters. And I know I ain't just talking to the folks in this room. Somebody needs to hear this online. That's right. And that's why I wanted to say earlier, I want to encourage you to share this word of reconciliation, this word of life. Yeah. Hallelujah, this ministry. Hallelujah, that's going beyond the confines of the church. Yes. Hallelujah, who's told them it's clouds of glory and streets of gold that we're seeking after and that we're hungry for. But I'm telling you are those clouds of glory. And you are those streets of gold. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Yes. Being peace in a safe place for people is what we're supposed to be. Hallelujah. We must truly understand our co-inclusion with Jesus the Christ. I read this, but I just kind of wrote this down. Now, I want to reiterate some things here. Romans 8, 13, we're talking about we live by the Spirit, therefore mortifying the deeds of the body, or rather the debts to the flesh. Yeah. We God. owe flesh nothing. That's right. That's good. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. I mentioned this, but I didn't even read it. I want to read this to you because we was talking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit knoweth all things. And its mandate is to reveal all things. It don't know how to not unveil God to you. <laughs> Lord. Because it is the nature yes. that it was created with to unveil who you are, Dana. Yes. Who you are, Sheila. Yes. Hallelujah. Ooh, my God. You're more than just a sinner saved by grace. Yes. Praise God. Amen. And a head jerk. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse... 10. These profound mysteries of God, God's eternal resolve, are now unveiled in us. Yes. Hear it. Yes. These profound mysteries of God, God's eternal resolve, are now unveiled in us. Nothing is hidden from Holy Spirit, who explores the innermost thoughts of God. How many of you in here know, without a shadow of a doubt, you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. So, by the simple knowledge of that fact, that information, let's read that again. God's eternal resolve are now unveiled in us. Nothing is hidden from Holy Spirit who you just declared that you are fully aware of. Yes. So nothing is hidden from you, Tony. Uh -huh. 
Because nothing is hidden from the Holy Spirit which you possess, or which rather possesses you. Who explores the innermost thoughts of God. That is what it is to have a relationship with God. I want to know Him in the most intimate of ways. When I started dating Dana, I just didn't want to know what her likes and dislikes were. I wanted to know what made her smile. I wanted to know what smell she liked. I wanted to know what scenery she liked. I wanted to know what movie she liked. I wanted to know why she liked the song that she liked. And now she likes songs so much they drive me crazy. (laughs) (laughs) She'll she'll, she'll wear a good song out in a minute. But you know what? That's what I wanted to know about her. That's what I love about her. And, and more than that, I wanted to know her in the most intimate of ways, which when I begin to know her in the most intimate of ways, she had to allow herself to be known in the yeah. most yeah. intimate of ways right. until finally it produced a Jairanese. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we begin to know him, hear me with the ear and the spirit, in the most intimate yeah. of ways, it's going to produce something inside yeah. of you right. called the Christ, the anointing yeah. of God himself in the earth. And the whole earth is groaning and travailing for a manifestation, hallelujah, of his glory that's locked up inside of you and I. Yes. Hallelujah. They're not longing for the rapture. They think they are. They're longing for him. That's right. They're not longing just to stay out of hell. They want to know heaven and the beauty of heaven. Hallelujah. And the only way that they're really going to know that is to see him face to face. And to be known as they are known. Hallelujah. I've said for a long time, Tony, we can settle the disruption of hell's fear by simply engaging Jesus. I don't care if you believe in a literal hell. You, when you get in a good enough relationship with Jesus, you'll find yourself not worried about hell right. because you're not dangled over hell's fire anymore. Right. Hallelujah. But you've encountered the love of Jesus in the most intimate of ways. Yeah. And you'll begin to preach a gospel that God wanted us to preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. What gospel did he want us to preach? The good news. That's right. yeah. What leads men to repentance? It's the goodness of God. Hallelujah. It's the goodness of God. And what we hunger and thirst and long for is a relationship with Him that's so much bigger than anything we've ever encountered. And then it'll overshadow and eclipse all these other things that so easily beset us. Yes. Hallelujah. In the light of all this, to now continue to live. Let's see. Let me let me go back here before I go back there. We was in First Corinthians chapter two, verse ten, talking about the innermost thoughts of God, which is what we are coming to know, which is what being unveiled to us, which is really what, when John was on the Isle of Patmos. What he was given by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Write these things. Yeah. Which have been hidden. Hallelujah. What is it revealing? Jesus. Right. The very first thing it declares in the book of Revelation. Is it is revealing Jesus from the beginning to the end, from the end to the beginning. The whole book is about Him, and it's it's not a book that's written with ink on pages that we call the King James Bible. Hallelujah! It's written in your heart, Tony. Hallelujah! It's the very essence of who you are. That book is just. The ink that's on the paper 
It's another way to bear witness of those who talked about the very same things that we're talking about now. Hallelujah. And we have entered into a progression in him to where there are people raising up all over creation who aren't afraid. Hallelujah. To, to speak out of the innermost being of who they are in him. Because we're becoming so alive in him. Hallelujah, that we are truly those lively stones. Right. And we're speaking of those things that we experience, Diane. Hallelujah, in our innermost thoughts, in our innermost intimate moments with God himself. Yeah. Yeah. And we're becoming those living tabernacles, those right. living words of life. Hallelujah, that we begin to walk into places of disruption and bring peace. Right. Right. Hallelujah. We walk into those places of arguing and hatred and bring peace and life and love That's right. and reconciliation. Yeah. I praise God and I declare now that, that there are people who are beginning to open themselves up. Hallelujah. To reconciliation. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. See, reconciliation has been shunned long enough yeah. by even the kingdom churches. But now there has been enough encounter with him that we can't unsee what we've seen. Right. I had an experience, Sheila, in these four walls, in this service, with such an encounter with God. Yes. How could I see, hallelujah, the, the goodness of the gospel any other way? That's right. And I was going to say it a while ago. If it's the Father's will that not one should perish, why would I preach a gospel that says we'll lose one right. to hell's fire? That's right. I refuse to preach a gospel that would make that declaration mm -hmm. because to preach that gospel is to preach something contrary to God's will, Diane. That's right. <clears throat> Verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just as a person's spirit knows, I love this. I love the way it develops this for us. Just as a person's spirit knows their own thoughts beyond the public eye. Mm -hmm. How many can attest to that? Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I, I talk to people and, and they'd be scared to go to a church where they knew that there was a true prophet of God because <laughs> they was worried they was going to see their sin. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're guilty. I'm just kidding. Ain't nobody going to uh, grab a hold of that. Sucker punch. Because just as a person's spirit knows their thoughts beyond the public eye, even so the spirit of God is our faith decoder to access the thoughts of God. Yeah. In modern technology, uh, technology, it would be impossible to access information from a source that is not compatible with your device. Uh -huh. We know this to be true. Or without a decoder. Yeah. So, God, the things, what is it uh, to be decoded? When you are programmed to think a certain way mm -hmm. until Holy Spirit comes in and begins to break down and decode that program. Yeah. See, that's what religion does. That's what the enemy does. That's what the carnal mind does. Right. That's what the Babylonian system is. It is you're programmed to, to die and not live. Yeah. That's why you always hear me say the enemy is out to destroy life in yeah. you. But how does he do that? He perpetuates death. Yeah. By causing you to think with your flesh mind, which is the carnal mind. Right. But the spirit is out to eradicate death in you. That's right. And quite the contrary, perpetuate life in you. Yeah. And how does he do that? By reprogramming the way that you've been thinking up to this point. Yes. Even to the point 
of living by some man's doctrine of heaven and hell, rapture, not rapture, pre-trip, post-trip, just tripping. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, that's why we get so tripped up in our doctrines. Yeah. And then we go read the scripture and say, well, that don't, none of that makes sense. Because how could a loving God, and let me tell you something, we, we all who are sitting in this room agree with this, and I know that we do because we've all talked about it. How could a loving God cast one of his own to eternal damnation hell's fire? Am I more merciful than God himself? Could I do that to Jacaranisi? Could you do that? Do we do that to Mama? Could you do that to me? You couldn't do that. No Does that make us more mer Well, you don't understand God's sovereignty. <laughs> well, oh, holy art thou. <laughs> you don't understand God's love right. is what I want to say now. Because if you did, you would understand his love on another level. That's right. That he refuses to see any lost that I'm preaching a gospel, hallelujah, of reconciliation that will even cause those who have died with a, a misrepresented version of who he is yeah. even have salvation beyond the grave. That's right. Yeah. Well, how can you say that? Because did Jesus himself not march himself into the depths of hell yeah. and lead captivity captive? Hallelujah. Have we not even been endued with the same power yeah. that I can't walk into the midst of your hell? And that those who have gone on to the other side, those same voices who are urging us on, yes. Mama Charlotte, Dale Davis, Miss Jenny, Pastor Jerry, even he knows mm -hmm. what he didn't know, what we don't know still yet to the, to the full intellectual mind. Right. But when we gauge, engage him fully, we begin to encounter his love as never before, Tom. Right. Hallelujah. And that love will, will save the most corrupt mm -hmm. from hell and their entanglement with hell. That's why the scripture tells us, let this same mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind is that? The kind that can bring salvation to all men. The kind of mind that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we know the rest of that. That's his mind. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. Hallelujah. He don't hate the world. Amen. For God so loved the world. Yes. He loves this world. Yes. He loves it so much he gave it to you and I. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. To represent him as ambassadors in this place. Mm -hmm. To reintroduce creation to its creation. Yes. And creation to its creator. Yeah. That the words that we speak are spirit and life. Yes. Hallelujah. That when we call a thing something it is. Yes. That's right. I said when we call a thing something it yes. is. That's right. Hallelujah. Faith without works Indeed. is dead. Hallelujah. My faith is starting to work in a whole nother level. Yes. Hallelujah. Some people's faith is only working in a level of finances. And they want to speak to their bank accounts and to their automobiles and, and all that, and to their bills. Hallelujah. But I'm talking to a people who are more concerned with the very substance and the nature of who God himself yes. is. Hallelujah. We were talking about Peter and John. They didn't have to say, oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, brother. You're here begging alms, and, and we want to give you something else. In the name of Jesus, just move forward right now. No, they said in the name. Yes. Or in the, in the, they came in the nature. Yes. yes. They didn't have to say in the name. They said, brother, such as I have, give I thee. Silver and gold have I none. 
But I got something greater than that. Yes. Hallelujah. To cause something in, t in you to live and not die. Amen. To speak health and prosperity and peace. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What a great big God we serve. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. What an amazing gospel this is that we've been given a mandate to preach. <clears throat> this verse 12 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll try to wrap it up here. The Spirit proceeding from God unveils the gifts of His generosity. He has graced us with, the under with understanding so that we may know what He has always had in mind for us. This is so unlike the secular spirit of the wisdom of the world where everything has a price tag. Wow. Christ is the unveiling of the mystery of God's wisdom. Now we know how God redeemed our righteousness and our wholeness in Christ in God's economy. Christ represents us what mankind can never achieve through personal discipline and willpower as taught in every religion. God's faith accomplished in Christ. Of his design, are we in Christ? Of his design, yeah. are we in Christ? We are associated in oneness with him. Our wisdom is sourced in this union, also our righteousness and holiness originate from him. Holiness equals wholeness in harmony of someone's spirit, soul, and body. I so appreciate that he put that in right order. That's right. That's right. Spirit, soul, and body. Our innocence, our complete well-being is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Secular religion is the product of the spirit of this world where everything is performance-based. Only the heroes of the moment are acclaimed. The rest are reduced to spectators and audiences. Yep. And that is what he separated us from. That's right. yes. That's good. Amen. Amen. I hope y'all received yes. uh, the richness, yes. hallelujah, of God in this service tonight. Yes. And that which is locked up inside of you, that you have full access to through the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that right. you have. 